We're taking a little break from all the crazy boat work in Panama today. We are jumping ahead, so please bear with me. I know this video is completely out of sync. We're gonna get back to all the crazy cabin cutting, bulkhead cutting, bulkhead grinding, fiberglass everywhere, cleaning the entire boat. But today, we're gonna drive seven hours across the country to go see another boat with the worst case of cracked bulkheads. that broken bulkheads on a Lagoon 450 would consume my life for half a year. But it has, and here we are. Started with a couple of boats, and now there's almost 200. It's nuts. I was talking to a Lagoon dealer, and he actually thinks it's more like a thousand, which is basically all of them, because they only ever made 1,100 of them. I just got in touch with my buddy who also has a 450 with broken bulkheads. So we're gonna check out his boat before we head to Tennessee. Here to see Dean Boyd. Thank you. We are in the Kima Boardwalk Marina, which is actually right on Galveston Bay where I learned how to sail. I had a slip here for like five months. We never finished the boat, so I never brought it back. Good parlay. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Good to meet you, man. Good to uh, meet you. So you getting it squared away? Uh, yeah, I'm actually here looking at Dean's boat because yeah. you know, he's got some issues as well. So. He's a subscriber, Dean. Yeah, he just told me, man. That's so cool, yeah. Yeah, he has a man crush on you. <laughs> man, he actually what... changed shirts, that, that, man, that... when you came over, okay? <laughs> this is what I had on. And uh, here's Dean's boat. Hey, would you stay with me till the sun goes down? Begin with you, it's so easy. I have not seen a boat this clean in a while. How's it going, Dean? Good to see you, man. I don't know Good seeing you, Good again. Okay, so Dean's gonna give us a quick walkthrough of his boat, just like a simple 450 tour. All right, here we go. We got new sail pack, new Genoa. Got a new chart plotter put on yesterday. Really? That is nice. Everybody's favorite part of the 450. Flybridge. This is why we love the 450. You could fit eight people on there. Yeah, I bet you that's 10 foot. So the 450 has this huge front cockpit area too. So you, you essentially have like two massive sitting areas that are outside. On the cooler months, we just hang out right here on the back. I don't have a grill. I need to get one of these. This is why we all bought this boat. There's actually three 450s on this road. Clint is usually here. We got Dean's 450 here. Three boats down, we've got uh, Chris Blocks. And then mine. Mine was supposed to be over there. It will be over there if I ever finish my boat. This is definitely where we hang out when it's hot. Got the air conditioning cranking. So tell me, what do you do? What's your background? We do refurbished aircraft interiors. We do jets. We do small planes. Any kind of plane, really. Okay. But mainly, we do general aviation aircraft. Okay. So Dean just chartered a boat out in Belize, and it was a Lagoon 450. 2019. Of course, this guy's gonna go inspect that boat for them. It's not his boat, but he went and inspected it. He found bulkhead issues on that one as well. Lots of cracks. Lots of warpage. So yeah, then that's there's cracks big, on the back of the flybridge. Yep. And then there's your warpage. Yeah, the warping behind the, the cabinets. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just, Port and starboard. It just buckles. Yeah. I did open the floor up, and this is all separated. We didn't really think about the bulkhead issues. We were watching Parlay and it was like, well, it's a hurricane damaged boat. Sure. This one wasn't in a hurricane, so mm -hmm. there's no problems with it. We started hearing more and more about it and I pulled my uh, trim off and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> you know, it's like a it's like a kick in the nuts. <laughs> it is, man. Could you imagine your half a million dollar investment? You open up one wall, take off some trim and boom, you just lost 150 grand in two minutes. He's gonna walk us through the process of how to professionally take off this trim. If you yeah. were in an airplane, yeah. you know, a multi-million dollar airplane, you would take it off like this, right? Yeah. So this is Wait. the right way. And then we'll contrast that with my method, which is the absolute worst way you can do it with no tools and no knowledge of how to work on interiors. just gonna start taping it off. 
take your putty knife and mark it. If I go any deeper than that, it's gonna start cutting into the wood. And just start tapping it in. Right now, I'm just the cutting the glue. But I'm gonna start putting a little thicker putty knife in there. We're not going to look behind there right now because all the issues are typically with the inboard side. I did the port side first. Okay. And it, it was just a little bent, but this one has a lot more compression. This is the one that is the worst. They're using this cheap five ply plywood. Aircraft cabinets used to be built out of plywood, but this three quarter inch, they'd be 15 plies, which okay. makes it stronger. Dean, thank you so much for uh, letting us take apart your boat. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Dean has showed you how simple it is to open. It's not hard. Five putty knives, blue tape, a little hammer, and a screwdriver. A little block of wood. If only he was there for me when I was taking mine off because I did it the uh, old-fashioned way. Brute force. Yes! What the hell? This is how it's supposed to look. What is going on here? Jeez. Dean is such a cool guy, man. He let us take apart his boat. Thank you so much, Dean, for showing us how to do all that work. All right, let's do the rest of this drive to Tennessee. Six hours to go. Tesla's autopilot is one of the coolest things that I've ever come across. I absolutely love any type of automation device or remote control thing or robotic anything, but it has a major flaw. It's actually a safety feature, but it's really annoying. Every 30 seconds on the highway, it makes you touch the steering wheel and shake it a little bit to prove to it that you're still paying attention, which of course I'm paying attention. Not right now I'm not paying attention, but I'm usually paying attention while I'm driving. If you don't touch the steering wheel within 30 seconds, then it starts yelling at you, beeping at you. So that doesn't sound like too big of a deal, right? Because you should have your hand on the steering wheel. But the problem is you can't just rest your hand on the steering wheel. You actually have to hold it, wait for that little signal to tell you to touch it. And then you have to ever so slightly move the steering wheel without moving it so much that you disengage the autopilot. It's super annoying. There we go. So now the water shakes around just enough to trick the autopilot into thinking that I'm still holding the steering wheel while I'm actually holding the steering wheel because I still keep my hand on the wheel. Open butthole. <laughs> Bring it in it. here. <laughs> we made it. Alive. We're bulkhead brothers. It's actually this guy's fault that I have that boat because I walked away already and he gave me a bunch of insider info on exactly what I could get that boat for. So it was because of him that I went back and lowballed the hell out of them that I got this boat. Come to find out it had bulkhead issues. started feeling like there might be some kind of bulkhead issues. I started noticing that there was things that were just not in alignment. There's like the drawers in the kitchen weren't aligned. It made me look at the countertops and you uh -huh. could see that there was about an inch difference between one side where the sinks are and where the stove is. It wasn't until I got back to the US in Mississippi that I could actually start taking stuff apart and you started opening everything what up. What did I find? Seeing... You know, cracks, okay. like buckling and get an absolute nightmare. So we're gonna jump in this uh, starboard engine and take a quick look. I see cracks. You can pretty much see the cracks just running right along that 
edge right there. We're gonna do the string test, which is actually the easiest test that you can just basically do on any catamaran. All right, so we're just gonna go hinge to hinge. Really easy, we'll go from this hinge and you run down to the other side and I'll put something heavy down on top of it. All right, pull it tight. Have you seen the new repair that they're giving some people? <laughs> so there's this repair, it's crazy, okay? So like imagine if this is a bulkhead. Right. Cabin walls, bulkhead, right? They want us to slap a bunch of glue in here and then shove in pieces of plywood in there, squish it in with wedges in between the cabin walls and the pieces of wood to sandwich it against the bulkhead and then to take the stainless bracket that's actually pretty cool take it and just cap it on the end which i mean it's a great idea if your bulkheads are completely fine but for somebody's boat who's completely bent like this guy's like mine was all the places where that bulkhead is tabbed into the boat it cracks it delaminates so yeah you can stop this from bending but you're not going to fix all the cracks without taking it all apart it's not a repair it's a reinforcement for boats that have no issues yet. And it's an excellent reinforcement for that purpose. But for somebody whose bulkheads are already broken, the whole hull has shifted, you gotta put that back in place before you glue everything back together. I got all this walk and dream. I got all this swing and beat. That's with me. That's with me. All right, let's see if we can get a look at the middle stringers. I call it the middle bulkhead, but they actually call it the midship stringer. Yeah. The glue doesn't connect. Oh, it's it's just slid out of the glue. Oh. Looks like it's meant to be like that, but this was actually completely flush with the hull. I can fit my whole finger, and down here I can fit, it's about three fingers thickness that it separated away. So that's how much his hull has kind of shifted and bent all this cabinetry. There's just no boat that has such a cool flybridge. Well, maybe a Nauta Tech 46, but no boat in my price range. Everybody has the front trampolines, right? You got the rear cockpit, but boom! Well, my whole family can sit up here and sail at the same time. Once we get a nice hard top installed, we can climb on top and sit at the top. It's like a balcony. That's my dream. It's been a while since I've been dreaming about this boat because every day it's boat work, boat work, boat work, problem, boat work, problem, solve problem, more problems, depression. It's nice to just relax and just see it for what it could be. Let's go check out your bulkheads. Oh, oh my God, man, that's worse than mine. That's a complete shear, that's crazy. There's a crack that goes from here all the way to the back. Check out the port side. I don't think it's as bad. If it's just a little bent or it's completely sheared like this last one, it doesn't really matter. The repair is exactly the same. Oh my God, that's bad. I thought you said it wasn't as bad. But it hasn't cracked all the way to the back. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's crazy. <laughs> what about your rigging? Did you check that? Did it go slack? Let's go take a look at the rigging. One thing we forgot. So what happens when the boat kind of opens up and the holes separate is obviously the rigging goes slack and you can see his shrouds are really, really slack. This is about as slack as mine were after we loosened it completely to do the realignment. And then this one, port side. Yeah, port side, wow. These forward baby shrouds are really loose. And then A lot of people have asked me, would I do it all over again if I could? And my answer is so convoluted because if it was just about the boat, no, I wouldn't buy it again. I mean, this has taken away six months of my life. Abandoned the family. I'm down in Panama. I'm living with mosquitoes day in and day out. It's horrible, but man, it's been a phenomenal experience. So no, I do it again. I do it again in a heartbeat, learning from Parlay on how to repair boats. I knew nothing about boats, but man, six month crash course, I'm pretty damn good now. It's been a really great experience. No regrets. So we've got cracked starboard engine bulkhead. We've got cracked sides of the stringer, mid stringer. 
We've got sunken transom, cockpit floor, countertops, cabinets, and salon deck. We've got completely sheared and cracked bulkheads on both sides. You'd be surprised, there are actually a lot of Lagoon owners that are like really annoyed with us kind of pointing out the bulkhead issues and trying to work through the bulkhead issues because I don't blame them. I mean, it's killing their resale value. All of a sudden, because of this small issue or big issue, they lose a hundred grand. That's a lot of money. But I think what they don't realize is that in order to regain our resale value, we have to push forward, not back off. We got to push Lagoon to fix this, have a proper fix, have a accepted fix so that people look at these boats and believe in them again. All right, we're gonna take a quick look at this one last place. This is uh, the sun pad, and I can already see the cracks in there. It's basically the other side of the aft engine room bulkhead. Good luck. Yeah, with yeah. You. Thank you. You too. Let me know when you're heading down to Panama. Will do. Will I'll do. meet you there. <laughs> I hope I don't. I'll Thank still you. be there. I hope you're done. Yes, I hope I'm done. Yes, yes. Sounds good. All right, take care, brother.